Hey, what's up, guys? So if you've been using the WF2860 for sublimation printing, you'll realize pretty quickly that one of the major drawbacks is the ink capacity. The standard refill cartridges will work just fine if you're going to be using uh, it for low volume printing. But if you're trying to do a run of multiple prints, say of 10 or more, you're just going to need a higher ink capacity. So in this video, we're going to be installing a continuous ink supply system or a SIS to our 2860 so that we can be able to run off multiple prints and not worry about the machine running out of ink. So first, let's go over some of the parts that I have here. Now, your kit might look different depending on where you got it from. This kit is something that I put together. I'm working out some final details, but I'll try to have this identical kit available on the website soon. So this is the tank that are gonna, that's going to be holding uh, all of our ink. Um, it's connected to this universal cis cartridge by these tubes, uh, which is going to deliver the ink to the printhead. I also have these 35 milliliter syringes for filling the ink. And I also have these 10 milliliter syringes for priming. You'll also need two of these hose clips and of course sublimation ink. Now I'm gonna be using Dynamite Gorilla Sublimation Ink for this project and make sure you grab yourself a pair of gloves because we're gonna be working with the ink. So the first thing we're gonna do is fill the tanks. Now this particular tank has three chambers to it. It has the main chamber or what they call the dosing chamber. It has an air chamber, which is covered by this little hole here coming off the dosing chamber. And then it has the ink stabilization chamber, which is this hole here, this back hole here. Actually, I'm gonna take this apart so you can see it too. Let's do that. So here is the main chamber, here is the air chamber, and here is the ink stabilization chamber. So main chamber, air, ink stabilization chamber, looks like a L. So first thing we wanna do is get about 25 to 30 milliliters of ink in this ink stabilization chamber. So. We'll go ahead and remove this uh, plug from the ink stabilization chamber. And we'll also make sure that our vent hole or our air hole is unplugged as well. I'll move this to the side so you guys can see it better. Okay. So we're gonna take our big syringe and we're gonna draw up about 30 milliliters of ink here. So we'll take that 30 mils of ink and we'll insert it into our ink stabilization chamber. Let's see if you guys can see it. All right, so now that we got that in our ink stabilization chamber, we'll go ahead and plug it back up. Now, when we plug it back up, what we have to do is tilt our tank to the front. And as you can see, the air moved out of the bottom and the ink flowed down to the bottom. So once all that ink has moved from the bottom to the, I mean, I'm sorry, once all the air has moved from the bottom up into the top of that chamber, we'll go ahead and move it back. And as you can see, the ink level is dropped on the back side and increased down here at the bottom. So all of that air has moved out of this pocket and moved over here. So now we're going to remove that plug again 
And then we're going to simply continue filling that back chamber or that stabilization chamber with ink. And we're going to fill it till we get to what they call the, the working line. Or essentially, this second line here. So about right there. And then from there, we'll go ahead and replace the stabilization chamber plug. And you're good to go. So that's what it looks like once we have um, filled that stabilization chamber with ink, moved it forward to get all of the air out of the bottom, rotated it back, and then refilled it so that it's full up into this first line here, or this second line here, actually. So then from there, we remove the plug for the main tank or the dosing chamber and we continue to fill our tank with ink. All right, so once we got that main chamber filled, we can go ahead and plug it back up Make sure that you leave the vent hole open for the time being. We're gonna leave that vent hole open and then we're gonna repeat it for the rest of the colors, the same technique. Okay, so now that we got the tanks filled, what we need to do is prime the cartridges. And what we need to do uh, to do that is just remove this, uh, these top plugs here out remove those plugs here then we're going to take one of the 10 milliliters uh, priming syringes we'll insert it into the cartridge here and then we're just going to pull up and what that's going to do is create a suction to fill this cartridge. Now, if you're smart, you wouldn't forget to make sure that this uh, shutoff valve here is open. And now we'll do it. So, we'll pull this up and it'll fill up with ink. And we're just gonna hold that plunger up, or hold that syringe up and let it do its thing. It's just going to fill with ink. I'm going to pull it until we get a few milliliters up into the syringe here. I hope y'all can see that. There we go. Alright, so then We'll simply remove that, plug this back up, like so, and then we'll repeat for these other three colors. Also, something that I forgot to mention is you want to make sure that your vent holes are open when you're doing the priming of the cartridges. So. Make sure you do that. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna do one more here in real time so you can see it. And we're just gonna pull up. And we're just gonna hold that up until that ink starts to flow into the syringe like so and again vent hole 
is open on the top of the tank and I'm just holding this plunger up and the ink will flow by itself. And once you get, like I said, a couple of milliliters, we're just gonna remove the syringe and you can dump the ink that you pull up into the syringe back into the tank. Fill, I'm gonna cover, plug your priming hole here. Let's get some, do some maintenance here, clean this up. Okay, so now we got all of the cartridges filled and primed, and now it is time to go ahead and put place them into the printer. Okay, so once we got our cartridges uh, primed and the tanks filled, it's time to go ahead and put it inside the printer. So the first thing we wanna do is turn the printer off. Uh, you're just gonna hit the power button it's gonna ask you, do you want to turn the power off? We're gonna turn, we're gonna click on yes. And once the printer turns off, we're gonna open the lid. Now, you might realize that the carriage is locked and you can't move this carriage over for us to take these cartridges out to put the cis cartridge in. So what you're gonna do is over here, this cog, this back cog, the last cog in this, uh, the last gear over here on the left hand side. If I move it back towards me, watch what happens. So when I move it towards me, that little white piece moves down and that will unlock the print head carriage. So now it can move back and forth. So. Once we move that down and got our little block out of the way, remember it's gotta be laying flat or leaning back, if you will. So that's locked, that's unlocked. I'm moving the wheel forward, I'm moving the wheel counterclockwise back towards me. So once it's back towards me and leaning down, now it's unlocked. So we're gonna move this all the way to the left and then back all the way to the right. It's gonna stop here for a sec, but if you keep pushing, it'll go all the way to the absolute right. And that's where you want it. So what we're gonna do is move this out and take our refillable cartridges out. Unlock those and take them out. Now, if you're gonna use these I've taken the chip beds, uh, the chip holders off, and that's just to keep it from snagging in the carriage here. Um, if you have your chip holders on, be very careful when you take these out because they like to catch on. They like to catch on the uh, on those pins there. Now we don't need the pins because we're running chipless firmware, but if you plan on uh, rolling the firmware back or something like that and you need those chips to uh, function you need to uh, just be careful um, pulling those out and if you can go ahead and remove those chip holders off of there so they don't get snagged on here so anyways uh, from there we're gonna make sure that this isn't this uh, tube isn't twisted or anything so you want it to look coming out of the the tanks you want it to be as straight as possible and when they come out straight this will actually be upside down so it's supposed to look like that it'll have a loop and then back up to the top and that 
is how it looks when it's right side up. So let's go ahead and place these cartridges inside of the printer. We'll go ahead and snap them down. Now, <clears throat> it's time to place those clips. So what we wanna do is get this adhesive off of here and then we'll come right back. Okay, so I got the adhesive off or the backing off of the, the clips here. So our clips are gonna sit on this beveled plastic right here. So the first clip, is going to sit directly across from our magenta cartridge if we were to move that carriage all the way back into its home position as far over to the right as we can. So I'm gonna wipe down with some alcohol here. That whole ledge, we're just gonna wipe it down, let it dry. Get all the oil off of the plastic so that the adhesive on the back of that clip sticks to the plastic as well as it can. We'll let that dry for a second. All right, so first clip, we're going to line up with this blue cartridge and we're gonna put it right there so on that clip lined up with the blue cartridge on that slanted piece of plastic here so right across from the blue doesn't have to be perfect but you want it in that vicinity our second clip is going to go directly across from this clip here that holds this back cable or that back ribbon cable so about right here. You can also kind of uh, gauge it by putting it in the middle of this touch screen. So about right here. Or so right there in the middle of that touch screen lined up. And it's also directly across from this retainer for this ribbon cable here. So that's how it needs to sit in there. So we're gonna move it all the way to the left, like so. We wanna make sure that the yellow cable is on the top. Okay, so I messed up. We wanna make sure that the black is on the top. So, and the yellow's on the bottom, so. You want it to look something like that. Uh -oh. All right, so you want it to look something like that. So you want it to come off yellow on the bottom, loop around so that it sits like that. So when you go to this side, you don't want it to be too much slack. I'm gonna pull some of that out. All right, and now get it moved back to its home position. Nice little loose loop there, nothing too tight, so that the ink can flow perfectly, like so. All right. So now that we got those two locked in. Let's go ahead and lock this shut off valve here, the shut off clamp here. I'm gonna put it right here underneath this 2860. So let's wipe that down with some alcohol. All Let that dry. Okay, so we got the uh, the shutoff valve or the shutoff um, clamp 
mount it. And now we have to mount the tank. Now, you don't want to mount the tank too high or too low. Um, as long as the print head pretty much goes in between the tank, then you're good to go. So you can actually leave this sitting on a table. Um, but I like to set mine and mount it to the side of the printer. So what we're going to do is take the mounting bracket off of the back. If you haven't already done so. And then we're going to get this adhesive uh, ready to stick on the back of here. So you want to make sure you wipe this area down here with alcohol. Make sure all the oil and everything is off of the plastic. Let that dry. We'll take this adhesive off. Okay, so we got it stuck on. Sorry, I couldn't do it with the while holding the camera here. So you want to get it the top of this. You want it level with this cutout here. So you don't want it sticking up higher than that. And you also kind of want to center it between these two body lines here. You don't want it too far on this side or else you won't be able to get to your maintenance tank. And you don't want it hanging too far on this side or else, you know, it's just going to hang off the side of here and don't it won't look as good. So once we got that mounted, we can actually mount our tank to the side of the printer. Let me see if I can do this. All right, so we're basically just going to take it like this and slide it up and it locks onto the it locks onto the clip like so now and if we need to it just kind of slides up and then it locks on the place like so so that's how the whole thing is going to look now You can kind of stick it right there just to kind of make it look kind of cleaner. This is what it's going to look like on the inside. Again, you want to make sure that it can go to your left and to your right without snagging up on anything. Now, remember we took these out. If you take this and put it caddy corner to this little inside of this little... Uh, spot right here on the print. I don't even know what I'm saying. But if we pull that down, that'll keep it from slamming down on this cord here. Now you need to use it like this so that the cord doesn't get jammed up on the on the bottom of the scanner unit. And you can still scan if you want. This will actually still work. But um, in sublimation, we don't really use the scanner too hot. so. Um, if you want to use it, you can. It's just going to be at an angle. And um, this right here is going to keep this lid from closing down on this on this cable here. Um, and this will keep it printing. So we're going to turn this printer back on. So now what we'll do is just run a couple of head cleanings just to uh, get the ink and everything flowing through the new cartridges. We'll run a couple of head cleaners and we'll run a purge, uh, a purge, a purge sheet. Let's just see what happens when we do a nozzle check. Actually, I'm make sure we got some paper in the first. Right, so go to maintenance and run a nozzle check. All 
All right, not so good on the first one, but it'll run a print head clean in here and get all of the air bubbles and things out of the cartridges. So we'll go ahead and click on no, and then we'll do a start the print head clean. It'll do its thing here, and I'll come back to it. All right, so I did the first four head cleanings after the cis cartridge installed. Um, and once we got the number four, we started getting some of the colors back. Um, being that they had those broken lines, I didn't want to run another print head cleaning. So I ran a purge sheet off of Photoshop. And now we're gonna let this run and then we're gonna run one more nozzle check to see what the pattern looks like. All right, so we did a purge sheet. So now we're gonna go ahead and check, do another nozzle check and see what the pattern looks like. Here's a nozzle check. We could probably use another um, another purge sheet. Um, we'll just leave it alone for now, and uh, we'll call it good to go. If we need to, we'll go ahead and do another uh, print head clean, or not a print head clean, but another uh, purge sheet. But those little uh, breaks right there aren't too too bad. So now. It's time to get our print together and do a sublimation print. All right, so what we're going to do um, for this project is we're going to be making rolling trays. It is 420, uh, 2021, so we're going to be making rolling trays today. Um, basically, what I use for rolling trays are just this uh, this serving tray kit from Condi. Uh, two of them come in the pack. Um they're 38 bucks, but they're really good quality uh, if you're going to be using them for a rolling tray. I wouldn't try to sell them because you're just not going to get a pretty good uh, profit margin on them. But anyways, what we're going to do is just be putting our image down here, assembling this uh, the out outer portion of the tray, and then we'll slide that image into it. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. And the uh, image is uh, eight and a quarter inches by 13 and a quarter inches. So we'll go ahead and get a new thing working here. So, oh, we already got one. I think I made one earlier. So we'll go ahead. And I have been working with my image here. And this is what I'm going to put on my rolling tray. Um, before we do that, let me do some things here to it, to the image here. All right, so now that we got our image the way that we want it, we'll go ahead and print it out. And as you can see, it just fits inside of the 14 by eight and a half inch box or for the 14 to eight and a half inch paper or the legal size paper, it just fits inside of it. So you don't need a wide format printer to make these products. So. Let's see. All right, so we'll go ahead and send this to the printer. All right, so while this is printing, what I'm gonna do is start putting the rolling tray, uh, the serving tray together, so that when uh, the image is done printing. All we have to do is slide the image into the pre-assembled rolling tray or serving tray. All right, so after the printer gets done printing the image, 
It'll be ready to put onto our hardboard so that we can put it into our rolling tray or our serving tray. So we already got most of it assembled already. We got these three sides already assembled. So once we transfer the image to the hardboard, we'll slide the hardboard into these grooves. And they'll slide into the tray. And then we'll put the other slide on. We'll put the other side of the tray on to lock it in. Our image will be down here. And then we'll have our finished product. So uh, according to the instructions, this piece of board needs to be pre-pressed for 20 seconds at 400 degrees first. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we'll come back and tape our image to the board so we can transfer it. Okay, so we pre-pressed it for 20 seconds. So now it's time to put our substrate on top of our paper and tape it down. So we'll get this centered on here. All right, so now it's time to get it to the heat press. And we're gonna press it for 65 seconds at 400 degrees, medium pressure. Okay, so when we go to press it, we're just gonna press it with the paper side up. I'm gonna cover it. I cover mine with a Teflon sheet just because I only use this for pressing uh, license plates. So we'll cover this up and we'll press it. All right. All right, so this is the finished product. We'll go ahead and move it over to the table so we can let it cool down for a little bit before we reassemble it and put it back into the rolling tray or the serving tray. Okay, so we got done pressing our substrate and now we have to get done and put it into this uh, into this tray. So here's what the image looks like. Not bad. A little lighter than what I wanted it, but I kind of had my pressure off a little bit, but it's all right. Like I said, I'm not, these are all gonna be used in my house. So no biggie. Put these on. And then we're going to slide it into this tray so we can assemble it. All right. Also come with these little feet to put on the bottom so that you don't scratch up your table. And there you go. So that's how I set up and install the sys for the WF2860. And this is definitely a must if you plan on printing off multiple sheets at a time. Also remember that you must have chipless firmware installed to set up the sys and use a printer in this manner. And I'll put a link in the description of the previous video where we set the printers up. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you guys got some really cool ideas for rolling trays for your next 420 party. And as always, thanks for watching. Good luck and good night.